Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is the Prime Minister of Poland, Mateusz Morawiecki. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We're nearing one year of war in Ukraine. Right. Its President Volodymyr Zelensky thinks that he can win this war in 2023, this year. We heard the French President, the German Chancellor, say here at the Munich Security Conference that this is going to be a long war. What is your opinion? Instead of saying Russia cannot win this war and Ukraine cannot be defeated, I think we should change the paradigm. If we want to have a long-lasting peace, we have to say Russia must lose this war and Ukraine must win this war. This is not only a semantic difference. This is a, a difference in approach to this war. This is why Poland is proposing to, to, give, is, to give as much of weapon as quickly as possible, because the next Russian offensive not only has to be um, you know, defended uh, against, but also uh, Ukraine has to be able to counterattack, to regain their own, uh, to reconquer their, their own uh, territory. And this is why it's such a uh, turning moment in the history of Europe. And I do believe that 2023, with our determination, uh, may be uh, the, the end of the war, uh, of that war in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, I do believe that Ukraine uh, will win this war. Possibly this year. Possibly this year, yes. Is this uh, your analysis that if Putin is not stopped or defeated, as you say, yeah. in Ukraine, other countries, including NATO countries, including Poland, could be next? Absolutely. So I, I would recall uh, the words of President Lech Kaczynski in 2008 saying in Tbilisi that now uh, Putin attacked Georgia. The next day is going to be Ukraine, then the Baltic states, and maybe the following days uh, Poland. And, and this scenario is being realized where only that um, uh, Ukraine is fighting with lion hearts for their independence, but also for our freedom and our security. This is why I believe that this war is uh, a kind of um, turning moment in, in the history of, of the globe, potentially, not only this part of Europe. So <clears throat> I think this jeopardy is very, very real. Um, Russia has summoned the worst demons of the 20th century, imperialism, colonialism, and uh, nationalism. And uh, they are, they, they, they're, this, these, these are foundations of, the, of their uh, system, of Ruskimir, as Putin and the Kremlin call it. And this is a very dangerous system. Are you seeing uh, intimidations? We saw some oh, Russian jets being in intercepted in airspace very close to the borders. Are you seeing more and more of that? Absolutely. Well, like we see more and more of those provocations. And they are very visible. But I tell you what is not so visible. And it's very dangerous for France, for Poland, for the whole of Europe. This is the Russian propaganda. Russian propaganda is enormous. You, it's difficult to imagine for people in France and in Spain and in Germany how effective it is, how overwhelming it, it is, and it may be. Uh, Russians are investing a lot in fake news, in social media, in propaganda, and this is the weapon of the modern war as well. Right. Uh you mentioned, and President Zelensky here in Munich urged his allies to speed up weapons deliveries. Uh, yeah. we, there was a debate about tanks. Uh, we heard the German Chancellor saying, well, we are now okay for Leopard tanks, but it seems many countries who said they would send them are not sending them, uh, really. I mean, is this uh, an issue now that, uh, although there is an agreement in principle, in practice, those tanks are not reaching Ukraine? Well, like, of course, theory or principles, uh, agreements uh, have to go in tandem with, um, uh, with practice. And uh, I remember my talks with Chancellor Scholz from December when I was trying to persuade him to... It was difficult. 
It was very difficult back then, but I prefer to see both glass half full rather than half empty. And I'm grateful that Germany eventually decided to send Leopard tanks, very modern tanks, to Ukraine. Now we are in the process of talking to the others, to the Norwegians, Danes, Finns, Finnish government, to ask them to be part of this coalition as well. Uh, because uh, this is not only a general and theoretical agreement, but also a practical uh, realization of this uh, move. Poland is ready to give our 14 Leopard tanks, which are, by the way, on top of more than 300 tanks which we would have delivered already, and we are in the process of delivery to, to, um, uh, to Ukraine. Some of them are quite modern tanks, so um, there, there is no other country in the world which would have delivered more tanks than Poland delivered to Ukraine. So I do believe that um, this coalition of Leopard tanks countries will uh, come to terms pretty quickly and the tanks are going to be sent to Ukraine. What about fighter jets? This is the new issue. Uh, you have F-16s, around 50 uh, of them. You're much more cautious than on tanks. You say it has to be a NATO uh, decision. There's also the option of Poland sending MiG-29 jets to Ukraine. Uh, where are you standing on this issue? We have a very little number of uh, modern F-16 fighter jets, as you said, and we have mix. So Poland can be a coalition of fighter jet uh, countries delivering, to be delivered uh, to Ukraine, but we are now prepared to deliver our mix and not on our own, not alone, but as part of a bigger move of a bigger uh, coalition. And yes, it's, it's very important because um, Russians are uh, dominating in the air, um, and even if more and more uh, rockets and missiles and, and um, bombs are uh, not reaching uh, their targets because of the anti-aircraft systems, uh, but uh, the disproportion between Ukraine and Russia with regard to the, the, uh, the, 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 all the aircraft um, fighters and so on, it's, it's so huge that Ukraine should be supported uh, in this area. So you will send MiGs rather than F-16s? Not immediately, only, far, only as part of a bigger coalition, as I said. Uh, what about the sanctions against Russia? There's supposed to be a new round of sanctions. Uh, you have said many times that it's not enough uh, because the sanctions are not biting the Russian economy as people expected it would. This is why um, I was probably first uh, prime minister in Europe who said that uh, there has to be seizure of Russian uh, assets. Russian Federation assets and assets of the Russian oligarchs. But that's uh, not accepted. Not yet, but many, many countries are, are talking positive language more and more about this. And if there was such a decision by the European Commission, for instance, or such a mm, stimulation coming from the European Commission, more and more countries would have to be in agreement, would, would need to be, would, would, would be able to agree with such an approach. Is this it's very realistic? Important. Well, this is, this is very important to realize this because this would mean also um, that um, uh, the aggressor uh, country is uh, bearing very direct responsibility for all the losses and damage, damages created by their, um, by their troops. So I'm a very strong proponent of this move. Uh, here, here you have, sir, 400 billion euro hanging in the air, uh, low hanging fruit, as they say, uh, and we should take it and we should use it for two purposes. We should use it to rebuild Ukraine, uh, its energy infrastructure, hospitals uh, bombed by the Russians, kindergartens, and so on. But also we should use it to uh, reduce the bills for gas and energy across Europe because this is a direct consequence of, consequence of Russian attack 
on Ukraine, this Putin inflation, as we say, uh, the very high inflation across Europe. So here you have 400 billion euro. Why not to use it? Let's be brave and let's work towards appropriate legal solutions. We've been hearing uh, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, the German chancellor, Olaf Scholz, repeat uh, for months that there's a need to keep open channels with Vladimir uh, Putin. Do you think that they are changing their stance on this very issue? I see they are changing now their approach. Um, I see President Macron uh, saying now that the talks are impossible and they lead to nowhere. That's my quotation, of course, not, not his. But I, I see him uh, changing his approach definitely. It's up to the Ukrainians to define what victory means. But as I said, I, 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 wouldn't, I, I wouldn't wish that Russia is uh, kind of uh, half winning this war because it would mean that they are preparing the next round. They are preparing for the next uh, attack, next offensive, potentially uh, on uh, the Baltic states or Finland or Poland or Romania. Any, or Moldova, any, any other country bordering with, or, or Central, uh, Central Asia countries. Um, this is now, uh, therefore, such a critical moment that we do everything possible for this Russia to be completely uh, defeated, uh, because this could only create a, a, a better starting point for, for a new era of development. This implies regime change in Moscow? Well, like, uh, that's, that's of course always possible, but I, I see unfortunately that the public opinion in Russia is by and large supporting Putin. That's, that, that's by the way also because of this huge, um, forceful, very vocal and overwhelming propaganda uh, from the Kremlin. President Biden is to visit uh, Poland to uh, next Tuesday and Wednesday, yeah. Yes, uh, to commemorate, in a way, the one year of war in Ukraine. How symbolic is it for Poland? I'm assuming there'll be a meeting with the Ukrainian president very, as well. It's, it's, it's very symbolic. Uh, we are, first of all, very grateful to the United States for their determination to defend Ukraine, because uh, we can be very blunt here. Without the, the United States, um, there, w there would not be free Ukraine anymore, most likely at this juncture. So yes, President Biden will uh, not only be, uh, President Biden's visit is, is going to be not only symbolic, but also uh, a very uh, concrete at the same time. We, we're going to talk about how to more effectively and efficiently support Ukraine with ammunition, for instance. This is very badly needed today and also other weapons uh, so that Ukraine can, can push uh, the Russians out of their territory. Right, and there will be, a, President Zelensky will be there as well. I and guess. as far as I know, I hope President Zelensky will, will be with us as well. This is going to be a very symbolic too. Mr. Prime Minister, I want to thank you very much uh, thank you. for, for appearing on you. the France 24 interview. And thank you for watching this interview on France 24 from Munich in Germany.